एवरी ऑल होप ऑल यू आर फाइन सो हियर आई विल डिस्क्राइब टूडे यूनिट फोर्टीन लैंग्वेज इन हकलबेरी फिन इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज ऑलरेडी आई हैव डिस्कस्ड यूनिट इलेवन टवेल्व एंड थर्टीन ऑफ हकलबेरी फिन ऑफ मार्क ट्वेन यू कैन गो टू माई डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स एंड एज वेल एज माई प्ले लिस्ट यू विल क्रिएट ऑल माई वीडियोज ऑफ हकलबेरी फिन स्कॉलेट लेटर एंड अदर सिटी क्वेश्चन पेपर्स दीज आर ऑल अबाउट योर एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड ऑल दिस हेल्प इन योर अपकमिंग एग्जाम एंड योर नेट एग्जाम ऑल्सो सो व्यूअर्स प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल एंड यू विल गेट अर्लियर नोटिफिकेशन इफ यू पुस्त द बेल आइकन ओके सो टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट यूनिट फोर्टीन लैंग्वेज इन हकलबेरी फिन ओके सो बी sincere in your study and you will get good marks in your exam okay so we will start unit 14 language in huckleberry finn okay here it is the structure objectives introduction mark twin on writing language in huckleberry finn contrast with the scarlet letter identifying characters by their language hux language a preliminary note on african american language jim's language language and power use of resist language let us sum up glossary assignment and further reading so here it is the objective okay already i have told in my previous videos every objectives every unit has its own objective so here in this unit also has its own objective so we will read the objective first the aim of this unit is to pay close attention to an important aspect of huckleberry finn's achievement namely its language and to study how it contributes to the total effect of the book and also account for its tremendous popularity over the years okay so here it is the objective the aim of this unit is to pay close attention to an important aspect of huckleberry finn's achievement namely its language and to study how it contributes to the total effect of the book and also account for its tremendous popularity over the years here it is the introduction okay in 1776 american colonies became politically independent but it took more than a century for american literature to become linguistically independent okay in say in 1776 american colonies became politically independent okay so when american colonies became when did american colonies become politically independent so in your net exam you get this type of uh, this type of questions so in 1776 american colonies became politically independent but it took more than a century for american literature to become linguistically independent this declaration came with the publication of huckleberry finn in 1884 in which the american vernacular was first used as the medium of great fiction okay so 1884 huckleberry finn was published and in which american vernacular was first used as the medium of great fiction so here it is the main key point you can note down in 1884 84 huckleberry finn was published okay so you can note down here huckleberry finn was published in the year of 1884 and in in 1776 american colonies became politically independent okay so mark twain strategy to allow a 14 year old uneducated white boy to tell his own story in his own language accomplished a quite revolution in the world of letters in america American literature was never the same afterwards it was probably to his innovative use of dialect among other things so what do you mean by dialect dialect means is your regional language okay if you study english very deeply you know what is regional language that is vernacular and what is dialect so here dialect means here regional language among other things the hemingway was referring when he called huckleberry finn the best book we have had and when he traced all american writing to it there is nothing before there has been nothing to good nothing as good since 
so mark twain on writing mark twain was passionately interested in the problem of style said lionel trilling in his introduction to the reinhardt edit edition of huckleberry finn and went on to art the mark of the strictest literary sensibility is everywhere to be found in the prose of huckleberry finn so who said this who said in the reinhardt edition of huckleberry finn the mark of the strictest literary sensibility is everywhere to be found in the prose of huckleberry finn here the answer is lionel trilling okay so here the answer is lionel trilling okay here the answer is lionel trilling then since style forms such an important part of the total effect of the novel it will be useful to summarize mark twain's views on the art of writing as expressed in his essays and letters that he was a highly conscious artist and that he took great pains in using different dialects in the novel is clear from one of the two notices printed at the start of the novel in this book a number of dialects are used to wit the missouri negro dialect the extremist form of the backwards backwards southwestern dialect the ordinary pike country dialect and four modified varieties of this last the settings have not been done in a haphazard fashion or by guesswork but painstakingly and with the trustworthy guidance and support of personal familiarity with these several forms of speech i make this explanation for the for the reason that without it many readers would suppose that all these characters were trying to tuck alike and not succeeding the sf also makes patent twins reliance of the spoken idiom of the people so mark twain style reflect his hatred for pretense and pretentiousness affection in all its myriad aspects was ever apparent to him and what he most relished in an author was a straightforward concreteness of presentation we may be sure that he would have approved Brunetier's assertion that a good writer is simply one who says all he means to say, who says only what he means to say, and who says it exactly as he meant to say it. So here it is the main key point you can note down in your notebook. Okay, so what uh, what is the view of Brunetier's assertion? Okay, so here the view of Brunetier's assertion that a good writer is simply one who says all he means to say, who says only what he means to say, and who says it exactly as he meant to say it. This is the Brunet Brunetier's assertion. Okay, this is the Brunetier's assertion. So Mark Twain was furious with James Fenimore Cooper, the author of Leather Stocking. tells for what he called his literary offenses which included offenses of style okay so mark twain was furious with whom with james fenimore cooper okay james fenimore cooper is the main key point you can note down james fenimore cooper okay so here it is the main key point you can note down james fenimore cooper okay mark twain was furious with james fenimore cooper the author of leather stocking tales for what he called his literary offenses which included offenses of style he laid down seven rules for good writing each of which he thought was violated in the dear slayer okay dear slayer so he laid down seven rules for good writing each of which he thought was violated in the dear slayer good writing according to twain requires that an author shall say what he is proposing to say not merely come near it use the right word not its second cousin excuse surpluses surpluses not omit necessary details avoid slovenliness of form use good grammar and employ a simple and straightforward style another writer he was critical of was walter scott in a later 193 1903 to brander matthews he asked a series of questions about scott's style which he obviously held to be unanswerable 
आर देयर इन सार वर्ल्ड स्कॉट्स नॉवल पैसेज डॉन इन गुड इंग्लिश सो इंग्लिश विच इज नीद स्लोवेनली नॉर इन वर्ल्ड आर दिस आर देयर पैसेजेस हुज इंग्लिश इज नॉट पुअर एंड थीन एंड कॉमन प्लेस बट ऑफ अ क्वालिटी अब ऑफ दैट डिड यू नो हाउ टू राइट इंग्लिश एंड डिडेंट डू इट बिकॉज ही डिडेंट वॉन्ट टू डिड ही यूज द राइट वर्ड ओनली वेन ही कूडेंट थिंक ऑफ अनदर वन और डिड ही रन सो मच टू रॉन्ग बिकॉज ही डिडेंट नो द राइट वन वेन ही सॉ इट द स्पेट ऑफ क्वेरीज सर्व टू एम्फोसाइज द स्ट्रिक्ट स्टैंडर्ड्स मार्क ट्वेन हैड सेट फॉर हिमसेल्फ यूजिंग द राइट वर्ड वॉज फॉर हिम अ मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट स्किल टू एन पुट द ग्रेटेस्ट वैल्यू ऑन द यूज ऑफ द राइट वर्ड और वट ई कॉल दैट एलुसिव एंड सिफ्टली ग्रेन ऑफ गोल्ड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द ऑलमोस्ट राइट वर्ड एंड द राइट वर्ड ही सेड वॉज अ लार्ज मैटर इट्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द लाइटनिंग बर्ग एंड द लाइटनिंग इट लाइट्स द रेडर्स वे एंड मेक्स इट प्लेन वेन एवर वी कम अपन वन ऑफ दोज intensely right words in a book or a newspaper the resulting effect is physical as well as spiritual and electrically prompt no wonder twain sakalberry fen is a triumph of style a living proof of his consummate care with words so language in hakalberry fen contrast with the scarlet letter since it was mark twain who established the use of colloquial language for serious literary purposes in american literature it would be a good idea to start with comparing and contrasting his language in huckleberry finn with hawthorne's language in the scarlet letter 1850 so given below are four extracts to each from the scarlet letter and the huckleberry finn examine them carefully and note the difference between them the founders of a new colony whatever utopia of human virtue and happiness that might originally project have invariably recognized it among their earliest practical necessities to allot a portion of the virgin soil as a cemetery and another portion as the site of a prison in accordance with this rule it may safely be assumed that the forefathers of boston had built the first prison house somewhere in the vicinity of con hill almost as seasonably as they marked out the first burial ground on isaac johnson's lot so scarlet letter chapter 1 walking in the shadow of a dream as it were and perhaps actually under the influence of a species of somnambulism mr dimstrel reached the spot where now so long since hister prine had lived through her first hour of public ignominy the same platform or scaffold black and weather stained with the storm or sunshine of seven long years and foot one two with a tray trade of many culprits who had since ascended it remained standing beneath the balcony of the meeting house the minister went up the steps scarlet letter chapter 12 then i sat down in a chair by the window and tried to think of something cheerful but it wasn't no use i felt so lonesome i most wished i was dead the stars were shining and the leaves rustled in the woods ever so mournful and i heard an owl away of who fing about somebody that was dead and a whip whip of will and a dog crying about somebody that was going to die and the wind was trying to whisper something to me and i couldn't make out what it was and so it made the cold shivers run over me so there is sakal very fine chapter 1 the first thing to see looking away over the water was a kind of dull line that was the woods on the other side you couldn't make nothing else out then a pale place in the sky then more paleness spreading around then the river softens off away off and weren't black any more but gray you could see little dark spots drifting along i was so far away it is so still the sounds come so far and by and by you could see a streak on the water so this is a, this is from huckleberry finn chapter chapter 19 so hawthorne's language in british english and standard literary language and has the elegance associated with it he is not using the spoken language of the people twain on the other
uses Huck's dialect for serious literary purposes and his sustained use of it for the entire length of the novel is one of the chief delights of the book. But through Huck's language is close to spoken English of rural Southwest America. Mark Twain has not created it merely by copying the speech pattern of a young semi-literate white boy. Used by the writer to replace the traditional literary style, it itself is a new literary style and utmost care has gone into its fashioning. Mark Twain has apparently done a lot of stitching and on-stitching though. When we read the final product and we are carried away by the apparent effortlessness of Hawke's narration, implicit in this is the recognition that the narrator is naive and untutored. Such a recognition is imperative when Hawke is the eyewitness narrator participant in the novel and has to take the readers along. Then identifying characters by their language. Having talked about the innovative use of colloquial English in Huckleberry Finn, it is time to examine how Mark Twain has used language to create characters. The language note at the start of the novel suggests that the characters speak differently which means we should be able to identify a character in the way he or she speaks here is an exercise i want you to do so exercise given below are several experts excerpts from the book read them and see if you can identify the speaker also decide what it is that enables you to identify the speaker. Is it syntax, the arrangement of words in the sentence or is it a grammatic habit or a habit of pronunciation? Try to be as specific as you can. I say to the people, why aren't this nigger put up at auction and sold? That's what I want to know. And what do you reckon they said? Why they said he couldn't be sold till she would been in the state six months and he hadn't been there that not that long yet. There now that's a specimen. They call that a government. They they can't that can't sell a free nigger till he has been in the state six months. Here is a government that calls itself a government and lets on to be a government and thinks it uh, it is a government and yet is got to set stock still for six whole months before it can take a hold of a prowling thieving infernal infernal fight, sorted free nigger and tuddered. Yes, tuddered in. I is rich now. Come to look at it. I owns myself. And I is youth. Eight hundred dollars. I wished I had the money. I wouldn't want no more. You would and bend down. Da in the woods without any dinner. And getting moss. Drowned too. That you would. Ha. Chickens. Knows when it's gone to rain. And so do. The birds chill. Blame the pint. I reckon I knows what I knows. And mind you, the real pint is down further. It's down deeper. It lays in the way Solomon was raised. You take a man that's got only one year, two children. Is that man gone to be wasteful or sullen? No, he ain't. He can't afford it. He know how to value him. But you take a man that's got about five million children running round a house and it's different. He was son, chop a child into as a cat. There's plenty more. A child or two, more or less, want no cousins to Solomon that fetch him. Well, the men gathered around and sympathized with them and said all sorts of kind things to them and carried their carpet bags of the hill for them and let them lean on them and cry and told the king all about his brother's last moments and the king he told it all over again on his hands to the duke and the both of them took an about the dead tanner like they heard they would lost the twelve disciples. Well, if ever. I struck anything like it. I am a nigger. Yes, it is good enough for me. It is, it is as good as I deserve. For who faced me so low? 
when i was so high i did myself i don't blame you gentleman far from it i don't blame anybody i deserve it all let the cold world do its worst one thing i know there is a grave somewhere for me the world may go on just as it's always done and take everything from me loved ones property everything but it can't take that some day i will lie down in it and forget it all and my poor broken heart will be at rest he went on a wiping the idea of the lynching anybody it's amazing the idea of you thinking you had pluck enough to lynch a man because you were brave enough to turn and feel the poor friendliness cast out to man women that come along here did that make you think you had grit enough to lay your hands on a man why a man save in hands of a 10000 of your kind as long as it's daytime and you are not behind him i say or this not because it is a common term because it and obsequious been the common term but because or this is the right term obsequious and used in england no more now it's gone out we say or this now in england or this is better because it means a thing you are after more exact it's a word that's made up out in the greek ago or go outside open abroad and the hebrew jism to plant cover of hence hint so you see fondrial or this is an open or public fondrial i says to myself this is another one that i am letting him rob her of her money and when she got through they all just let themselves out to make me feel at home and know i was amongst friends i feel so ordinary and low down and mean that i says to myself my mind's made up i will have that money for them or bust it was awful thoughts and awful words but they were said and i let them said that stay said and never thought no more about reforming i sobbed the whole thing out of my head and said i would take up wickedness again which was in my line being burn bring brung up to it and the other weren't and for a starter i would go to work and still gym out of slavery again and if i could think of anything worse i would do that too because as long as i was in and in for good i might do as well as go the whole hog oh it's he it's the dad blame which is say and i wished i was dead i do this all as it's a uh, and they do must kill me they scares me so please to don't tell nobody but it's a our old marcellus he will scold me kiss he say then and no witches i just wish to goodness he was hit now then what would he say i just bet he couldn't find no way to get around its time at this time but it's always just so people that sort stay sort they won't look into nothing and find it out from they self and when you find it out and tell him what it they don't believe you well some of the west authorities has done it they couldn't get the chain off so they just cut their hand off and soaked and a leg would be better still but we got to let that go they daren't necessity enough in this case and besides jim is a nigger and would not understand the reasons for it it don't make no difference how foolish it is it's the right way and it's the regular way and there aren't no other way that ever i heard of and i have read all the books that gives any information about these things then hawks language let's now converge on hawks language and note the features that characterize it and then compare and contrast it with the language used by other characters here is an exercise for you read the following excerpt and write notes on the features that help to identify it Now the way the book winds up is this Tom and me found the money that the robber hid in the cave and it made us made us rich we got 6000 dollars a piece all gold it was an awful sight of money when it was piled up well just thatcher she looked it he took it and put it out that interest and it fetched us a dollar a day piece all the year round more than a boy could tell what to do with the widow douglas she took me her 
for her son and allowed she would civilize me but it was rough living in the house all time considering how dismal regular and decent the widow was in all her ways and so when i couldn't stand it no longer i lit out features the paragraph allows us to sample several thought not all features that one associates with hack style a principal feature of hack style is the use of run on sentences with the help of coordinate conjunctions such as and then so and so with subordination kept to the minimum this together with simple colloquial diction facilitates a smooth flow of words that doesn't get clogged The cumulative effect of such run on sentences is to strengthen the impressions of Navit of the narrator and his lack of linguistic sophistication. There are other idiosyncratic features of Huck's style that deserve notice. Huck uses a tautology when introducing a subject. George Thatcher, he took it. Here the subject is repeated. The widow Douglas, she took me. two highly favored lexical items are well and by and by though the latter does not figure in this excerpt note that the non standard spellings civilized are there many such spellings in hawks language not many notice the use of double negatives but then this is often characteristic of colloquial english i couldn't stand it no longer the verb allowed is used in its older sense affirmed The widow Douglas allowed she would civilize me. You will be able to spot many more features in Huck's language as you read the novel. Huck's narrative style is used to achieve a variety of effects. He uses it for lyrical description as in the dawn passes, for inner wrestling with his conscience, over slavery for detailed description, for parody and for satire. A preliminary note on African American language. I like to begin by recalling the words of the African American dramatist Leroy Jones about the dual heritage of African American language. It is absurd to assume as has been the tendency among a great many western anthropologists and sociologists that all traces of Africa were erased from the negro's mind because he learned english the very nature of english the negro spoke and still speaks drops the lie on that idea the scholars today believe that the prolonged contact with european americans resulted in the african american adopting some eurocentric patterns both the both african american language and african american language culture have roots in the african patterns as w e b du bois put it nearly a century ago in souls of black folk 1905 one ever feels his tunes an american a negro a principal area in which the uniqueness of african american english a a e is evident is in pattern of grammar and pronunciation Many of these reflect those that operate in West African languages. For example, many West African languages do not have the English south sound th and in aae this sound is represent represented by the next closest sound as da a t n f. Okay? So here American Afri- African American English is evident is in a pattern of grammar and pronunciation many of this reflect those that operate in West African languages for example many West African languages do not have the English sound th and in aae African American English language this sound is represented by the next closest sound d a t n f r sound the r sound at the end of a word and after a vowel is not heard in african american english instead a vowel sound is used that is summer time is sometime in african american language okay so r is silent here you can note down summer time is summer time in african american language final and medial consonants These are reduced to a vowel sound or a single consonant sound. The child becomes child in African American language. Other examples: don't becomes doan, mind mind. These are don't becomes doan, mind mind. These are a few patterns that one could find in African American English. 
then jim's language what i want you to do now is to read the following excerpt from a speech by jim and write brief grammatical notes about it well then this is the way it it looked to me huck if it was him that use when set so set free and one at the boys was to get sort would he say go on and save me name in bought a doctor for to save this one is that like mas tom swear would he say that you bet he wouldn't well then is zim gone to say it no sir i don't was a step out in this place doubt a doctor not if it's 40 year this is chapter 4309 which terms of affection does jim use for huck in the course of the novel so language and power language has often been used to exert power over others there are two examples of this in huckleberry finn the first example of the use of language as a tool of power relates to the attempt of the frauds to manipulate people through the tall tales they tell conem both conmen both this manipulation takes two forms first soon after their rescue by huck and jim from the howling mob they lay claim through the fake titles to the power and status associated with them by appropriating the discourse of the nobility the switch from one discourse to the other is clear when the two are just opposed well says the duke i had been i would been selling an article to take the tartar of the teeth and it does take it off too and generally the enamel along with it but i stayed about a one night longer than i ought to yes my great grandfather elder son of the duke briswater fled to this country about the end of the last century to breathe the pure air of freedom married here and died leaving a son his own father dying about the same time and here i am i forlorn torn from my high estate hunted of men despised by the cold world ragged on heartbroken degraded to the companionship of felons on a raft the parodic appropriation produces the desired effect jim pitied him over so much and so did i and though huck recognizes them for what they are both agree to wait upon them as though they were royalty secondly the fraud the frauds managed to be fooled not only the wicks family but almost the whole town at least for a time in this example in this example they conceal their deceit in a parody of the language of familial love and ceremonial discourse listen to the king speaking to the family well by and by the king he gets up and comes forward a little and works himself up and slobbers out a speech all full of tears and flap doodle about its being a sore trial for him and his poor brother to lose the disease and to miss seeing this is the life after the long journey of 4000 mile but it's a trial that sweeten and sanctified to us by this dear sympathy and this holy tears and so he thanks them out of his heart and out of his brother's heart because out of their mouths they can't words being too weak and cold and all that kind of rot and slaw still it was just sickening and then he blubbers out a pious goody goody amen and turns himself loose and goes to crying fit to burst stylistically this passage is far more complex and uses several devices of language to satirize the king's attempt to defraud the wicks girls the following points could be made about it most of the king's speech is reported indirectly by huck who is of course the narrator and the eye witness which means that the key words are the king's more specifically the phrases a so trial poor brother missing the deceased alive after the long journey of 4000 mile out of his heart out of his brother's heart out of their mouths they can't words being too weak and cold are all words of the king all these formal expressions are part of the vocabulary of law but in the mouth of the king they sound bombastic 
there is one sentence of the kings that is repeated verbatim it is a trial that is sweetened and sanctified to us by this dear sympathy and this holy tears huck both introduces and ends the report about the king's address in the words of his own choice it is very uncommon for huck to get angry but here mark twain abandons irony and uses direct satire huck's own feelings are clear in the phrase all full of tears and flap doodle and all that kind of rot and sloss huck's choice of other words is equally significant he hints at the king's dramatic positioning by using the words he works himself up and slobbers out a speech and near the end blubbers out a pious goody goody amen the king's words are embedded in huck's sentence since huck uses the simple construction of a ronan sentence the embedding has the effect of the suggesting a contrast between the king's insincere bombast about familial love and huck's outrage simplicity this manipulative attempts by the king and the duke not only expose the frauds but also show the hollowness of the institution of nobility itself additionally these examples have the effect of questioning and displacing the official discourse associated with gentle birth respectively and honor Tom is another character who wields the weapon of language to quell questioning and enforce obedience. He has read chivalric romances and he is obsessed with doing things in the right way, which means that is prescribed in these books irrespective of its foolishness or of the suffering it might cause. When Ben Rogers questions the wisdom of ransoming prisoners without knowing what ransom means, Tom says he doesn't know about no but invokes the authority of books. I have seen it in books and so of course that's what we have what we have got to do later when during a discussion of the plan to rescue jim from slavery hawk questions the need for a rope ladder he insists on doing things in a regular way and he dismisses the suggestion to use a hikovi bark ladder instead as perfectly ridiculous when hawk calls tom's plan to dig an escape tunnel with case knives Fulisi replies it don't make no difference how foolish it is it is the right way and it's the regular way and this and no other way that ever i heard of and i have read all the books that gives any information about these things later tom used the words duty and principle and succeeds in silencing huck but the disclosure that james was already free turns the whole into a parody of romantic rescue what mark twain is doing here is to ridicule the whole discourse spun around the authority of books on chivalric romance use of racist language mark twain has been accused of using racist language in huckleberry finn according to one count he has used the degrading word nigger as many as 211 times in the course of the book The accusation against the writer seems to stick because of Hawke's frequent and apparently unthinking use of it. Significantly, Hawke uses the term not only in the beginning after he has learned to value Jim as a human being but afterwards also. As late as in chapter 42 after the injured Tom and recaptured Jim have been brought in Huck reports an excited Aunt Sally scattering order right and left at the niggers later Tom's disclosure, uh, disclosure that Jim is already a free man makes him realize how he could help a buddy set a nigger free both these instances are particularly neutral occasions when Huck did not need to have used the terms if he did not want to Earlier in the Fells farm where he is mistaken for Tom he peeps about an explosion on the boat goodness gracious anybody hurt goodness gracious anybody hurt no killed a nigger well it's lucky because sometimes people do get hurt Aunt Sally's traditional attitude denying humanity to the blacks is understandable, but Huck's equally insensitive reply is baffling. Notice that Huck is not only not the only sympathetic character to use the term. The doctor who treats the injured Tom is another. He has a kind word for Jim, who loyally refused to escape to freedom. I never see a nigger that was a better nurse or faithfuler. Yet he was risking his freedom to do it and was all tired out too. 
वन एक्सप्लेनेशन इज दैट द टर्म वॉज इन इनडिस्क्रिमिनेट यूज इन टू एंस अमेरिका एंड इवन सेंसिटिव पीपल हु आर सिंपथेटिक टू द नेग्रोज लाइक हाउ कैन द डॉक्टर यूज इट विदाउट अ ट्विंस ऑफ कंसाइंस सेकेंड द यूज ऑफ द वर्ड कुड बी सीन एज अ हैंग ओवर ऑफ द रेसिस्ट व्यूज दैट ही हेड इन इज हैनिवल डेज इवन मोर ऑफेंसिव इज द यूज ऑफ द वर्ड एज ए मेटाफॉर फॉर अ कंटेम्पली कंटेम्पटेबल पर्सन एट द एंड ऑफ द चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फोर हक इज कमेंटिंग ऑन द सॉफ ड्रामा द किंग एंड द ड्यूक पुट अप फिन दे प्रोज दे पोज टू बी द बदर ब्रदर ऑफ पेटर विक्स न्यूली अराइव फ्रॉम इंग्लैंड वेल इफ एवर आई स्ट्रॉक एनीथिंग लाइक इट आई एम अ निगर इट वॉज एनफ टू मेक अ बडी एसम्ड ऑफ द ह्यूमन रेस so here it is a picture you can see on sally talks a blue streak the use of the word is highly ironical because hawk is expressing his disgust at the drama the two frauds are stazing but he does it by using a term that expresses a contempt for the negroes obviously the term has become a part of hawk's vocabulary but if twain lets hawk use the word nigger indiscriminately his use of the color dichotomy and symbolism shows greater sensitivity this instance is related to pap and jim one of father the other a father figure when pap appears for the first time his face was white not like another man's white but a white to make a body sick a white to make a body's flesh crawl a tree toad white of fish valley white this white man is shown resenting an educated negro who was almost white in color for his proud bearing this opposition makes nonsense of the dichotomy based on color hawk who has internalized the color symbolism black standing for evil and white for goodness but when faced with jim's loyalty says i knowed he was a white inside then here it is the picture you can see there is pap then let us sum up mark twain's innovative views of hawk's colloquial language constitutes a most important landmark in american literature the language of emerson thoreau hawthorne and melville was formal and literary and at its worst also soy twain changed it all by successfully demonstrating the colloquial speech could be used effectively to achieve a variety of literary effects but though as ricard chase says it is close to the spoken idiom of rural southwest america the language of huckleberry finn is itself a new literary style this new style has been consciously cultivated and adapted to meet the requirements of a long story a self taught genius that he was he laid the utmost emphasis on using the right word in the right place huck's language is described as a as an unfallen academic adamic dialect but since he is the narrator also we get to hear through him several other voices principal among these in jim's back dialect which to sometimes called realistic is perhaps more correctly described as romanticized folk speech other voices include the voices of the vicious characters like pap those who like the king and the duke use language to manipulate people or who like tom use it as a tool of power Mark Twain's use of racist language has been commented upon but though wholly unconscious it perhaps so shows how even a great writer is limited by his time and place and yet in spite of this limitation the language of huckleberry finn remains for a large number of people an unfailing source of its appeal that cuts across the boundaries of time and place here it is a glossary nigger slang is an offensive term of contempted use for negroes the word nigger first appears in 17 1700 in samuel sewell's diary where the word is spelled with only one g tis to be feared we have no other kind of title to our niggers it is a variant form and pronunciation of negro a word which originated from the latin word negro for black a leading black educator is reported to have said the white man may not intend nigger to be derogatory but to black man it is always derogatory and demeaning ralph ellison the author of the invisible man held that the white immigrants uncertain of their own identity seized upon the presence of black americans and used him as a marker a symbols of limits a metaphor for the outsider perhaps one of the first epithets that many european immigrants learned when they got off the boat was the term nigger it made them feel instantly american going to the territory 110 to 11 
then discourse can mean a number of things essentially it is a language in use in linguistic it means a stretch of language rather than a sentence basically it is a stand, it is a language which is understood as utterance and thus involves both speakers and writers and also listeners or readers so here it is the assignment question in what way does hawks language reflect his, char his character bring out the difference between the language used by the king and the duke how does tom try to impose himself on huck here it is the father reading david serval vn all trying to talk alike varieties of language in huckleberry finn then janet holmgren mac mcke tears and flap doodle point of view and style in the adventures of huckleberry finn then brander matthews mark twain and the art of writing dilip kumar das language ideology and style in mark twain Richard Chase Mark Twain and the novel in the American novel and its tradition Ellison Ralph going to the territory New York vintage books so here this is all about your unit 14 all about unit 14 languages in language in Huckleberry Finn so please viewers like share subscribe study with master notes you will get all notification about my upcoming videos regarding your exam and your net exam also so good luck best of the luck all the best thank you viewers thank you all